How are you this fine afternoon? Great. Giving me some hearts. I appreciate that. Again, my name is Tina, and I'm going to be talking again about learning centers. And the reason why I um, emphasize learning centers is because I believe that is the key, one of the keys to quality is having those quality learning centers where a child can actually go into a center according to what their um, interests are, wherever their interest lies. They should be able to go into that particular center and explore that area. Because I really uh, disagree with having children taking these subjects even in school and high school that they're never really going to use, they have no interest in. Um, for instance, why have someone take algebra and geogra uh, uh, geography or geometry when they're never going to use it again. They have no interest in that area. Um, they're never going to use it. You know, what's the purpose? Why not have that person look at an area, um, do, doing more in an area that they have an interest in? So if their interest is art, the arts, or if their interest is um, helping people, um, psychology, something like that, that's the area that people should be pushed towards and not always just a, st a set curriculum for everybody. Um, so I think that's important in early childhood education that we allow children to follow their interests, to do something that they find joy in, that they're interested in, and just go with that, okay, and see how far you go with it. Um, not to push them into any certain areas, but just to allow them to explore. You want them to explore different areas because at that age, they don't really know what they want. Um, but sometimes they do have, a, have a, a preference to a certain area and they like a particular area. So maybe the science area or the block area is of importance to them. So you want to encourage that. Um, so that's what I like about centers. And I think it's uh, a great idea to, you know, keep them interested in those particular centers and keep it active and keep it um, rotating materials and putting new things into those different centers so they can explore the different um, areas. But what I want to talk about today is the fine motor skills area. Um, so in the fine motor skills area, this is where they're actually learning um, their coordination and small muscle movements. Okay, So usually it's the synchronization of hands and fingers along with the eyes. So these are items that you need um, to have in your, um, in your fine motor area. Things like um, small building blocks, you want to have stringing beads, um, peg boards, sewing cards, and things like that. Puzzles are um, something that you should definitely have in your fine motor area. And your fine motor area should be available to the children, again, using the same phrase, for a substantial portion of the day. Again, what that means is that you need to have that available um, for a one-third of the time that your facility is uh, serving children. So for instance, again, if you are open for three hours, you know that you have to make this area available to them at least one hour of the day. So if you're open and your, um, your program is a six hour program, then you know you need to have that area open for centers for at least two hours. And it, of course, it's not going to be for the whole two hours at one time. You may have a morning session where you allow them to go into those areas and then have another afternoon session where they can rotate and go to another area. And what I like to do in centers, too, is to switch off every about 10, 15 minutes. I think 15 minutes is a sweet spot where they can actually get into those areas, explore those areas, and then uh, call for a rotation and let them try an area. I usually try to encourage children to try a different area. You know, just try it. And if you don't like it, then you can always go back to another area during the next switch. But I don't want to force them into another area, but I want to allow them, encourage them to try out a different area and see how they like it. Um, uh, materials, again, should be rotated. You don't want to keep the same stale materials, and uh, I see that in a lot of uh, areas that are dealing with science, especially. Um, but also in the fine motor area, you want to rotate those activities, not the same activities day after day, day after day. You want to make sure that you are rotating those and making it interesting for the child. You want to make sure that they are neatly organized on the shelves, and you want to make sure that you're labeling the shelves, maybe a picture of the item that you have on the shelf along with the name of the item, depending on the age group that you're working with. Uh, I think it's always a good idea to have pictures and the name of the 
the item so they'll know where the item goes after they're done with it, where to put it back on the shelf. You want to make sure the shelves are low enough so that they can get to the items because if it's out of their reach, um, when your surveyor comes in, that they're going to say that that's not accessible to children. If it's something that you have to get off of a shelf, um, or if you're saving those good items for certain occasions, they can't be counted um, if they're not accessible to the children for a substantial portion of the day. Um, you definitely want to make sure that those items are appropriate to your age group. So if you're working with toddlers, for instance, and you're buying puzzles, you want to buy those puzzles that have the knobs on them that they can take on and off. So always looking at the age that it's appropriate for in those different um, learning center areas. So if anyone has any questions or anything they want uh, me to expound on with regard to learning centers, um, in particular your fine motor skills area. But again, this area should be open to children for a substantial portion of the day, so allowing them to go into that area and to explore that area for a large portion of your day is um, according to the environmental rating scales and that's the tool that I use when I um, go into child care centers to do um, their quality control and to do their rating to see um, where they stand as far as quality. Any questions? I want to thank you all for joining me and thank you for all the love, all of the hearts um, that you sent up during this broadcast. Um, the next time that we meet, we're going to go into talking about the art area. Um, so again, the, the areas um, that I look at for our learning centers are the fine motor, art, music movement, the blocks area, the water, sand area, the dramatic area, the science um, and nature area, and math and numbers area, and then we talked about the reading area. I am in Wisconsin, and in the state of Wisconsin, we have what's called Young Star Rating, a Young Star Rating Scale, and we can um, the centers can get as high as a five star rating scale, and our payments based on are based on how many stars the center has. So if they're receiving a county subsidy where they're paying for child care for the parents. Um, they will be paid based on what their star rating is. So, for instance, if they're, well, if they're zero, of course, they can't even participate in the um, subsidy program. Um, you have the same thing with it. Yeah, it's, it's something that um, most states are um, anticipating going into. If they're not already doing something like that, they probably will be um, very shortly. Um, uh, one star. Um, I don't think you can participate with a young, with one with one star. If you're at a two star, you're on the level um, of just standard, and you just get the standard. Um, you get a little under actually what the regular rate would be. If you're a three star, then you would get exactly what the standard rate is. If you're a four star, you get a little more, and if a five star, then you get the most. Um, and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but anyone who's in Wisconsin would have uh, access to that information. So it's you know quite advantageous to try to get to the five-star level if you can, because uh, also parents are looking at that when they're um, looking for child care programs. They're getting to the point now where they are asking, well, how many stars are you? And you do have to display that on your door and things like that, showing what level you're on in your child care program. And so that, yes, that helps parents to, to really understand, you know, what your rating quality is. And um, some choose not to participate because they don't believe in the rating process. Um, a lot of people still believe that in early childhood um, caring for children shouldn't be about the educational level and the number of materials that you have and the type of materials you have and the time that you spend in each uh, activity and all that. It doesn't matter that the care and the love that you give the child is important. And I do believe that to a certain extent, but I do also believe that our children um, deserve to have quality and they should um, be cared for by people who um, have some education in the field, early childhood education. At least, you know, some education, even if they don't have a degree in the area, it's at least to the point where they are educating themselves and getting continuing education. 
And also, just um, to let you know that if you are looking for continuing education for your program, feel free to go to our website at any time. We do offer online continuing education, and our um, programs are available and received by most states. We have formal authorization for the state of Wisconsin, Texas, Iowa, Indy, um, Illinois, Oregon, and um, Indiana. Uh, and then we're constantly seeking out um, authorization through other states as we go along. So if um, you are not in one of the states that I just mentioned, that doesn't mean that you can't use our training and our continuing education. You would just need to ask um, your licensor or your uh, Department of um, Family and Children's Services and find out um, if they will allow you to take the courses with us. And it's all online um, and it's self-paced courses. Any questions about learning centers, um, about myself, or about any of the training that we provide? Uh, also, I want you to follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. I am also putting together a magazine. It's an e-magazine um, that will focus on the early childhood field. And this is going to be something um, that you can open up online. It, the page is going to turn just like a real um, magazine. But it's going to be a lot of helpful resources. And I want to open that up um, for people who own child care centers to put a free ad put a free ad in this magazine um, and it's going to be a quarterly magazine that I am going to be um, publishing across social media so if that's something that you want to partake uh, partake in or participate in please let me know all I ask is that you send me a PDF file of your advertisement that you would like to go in the magazine and um, I'm hoping to have that out within the next couple weeks and sharing that on social media all the social media platforms Facebook Twitter um, LinkedIn, um, uh, per, uh, Periscope, of course, um, and all the other. I'm, I'm on several other um, social media platforms that I'm going to be sharing that on. So if you want to per, uh, participate in that, please let me know. I want to definitely put your ad in there. And if you have articles that you've written um, regarding the early childhood field, please, please let me know. Send that over to me. Um, again, if you go to my website, um, you can actually check me out or you can send me an email. My email is networksllc at sbcglobal.net. And you can also give me a call at 1-800-439-1098. Uh, 438-1098, I'm sorry. No, 439-1098. So 1-800-439-1098 is where you can call my 800 number. The local number is 414-362-4209. So thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you on the next scope. Have a good day. Bye-bye.